this is the uh, the assurance region model. Um, now, at the beginning, we said that um, uh, in the DEA, uh, you don't have to have the complete weight information on on the weights, and in, in, sense, in most of the case, you don't have any information on the on the weights or the, the trade-offs uh, between inputs and outputs. Uh, but sometimes you may have some, you know, type of um, preference over the uh, the inputs and in, in, in the outputs, and in a sense you have some sort of fuzzy um, information on those weights or multipliers, and we are you should you know add that information into a DEM model, and the result in the DEM model is called the assurance region model. Uh, those weight information here. Uh, that you're going to add into are called assurance region. Um, here, what you're looking at is the standard form for uh, the assurance regions. Um, the alpha, and beta, uh, and delta, and gamma. These are all um, given numbers. Um, so you would look at the uh, the ratios of the input weight and uh, the ratios of the output output weights, and you will select one particular input. Uh, and you would compare all the other inputs to, uh, I mean, the the weight that you would select one particular input, and you would compare the multiplies or the weights of that input to all the other inputs, for example. So this is the uh, the typical um, Schultz region format. Now you don't have to have um, um, all the uh, the ratios for all the inputs. You may have only, you know, if you have five inputs, you may only have two. Um, two of the you have information on two of the inputs. That that's fine. Okay. For example, um, you know, this is one um, uh, assurance region between the uh, the number of employees and the assets. Okay, so this is one um, you know one uh, ratio constraints. This again, this is non nonlinear. If you go, would solve this in the LP, you will have to um, convert that into um, two. Uh, uh, Linear constraints. What the first one, for example, would be uh, the view uh, um, the v employees is less than or equal to two times the the weights on the multiplier on the the assets. So that's the first one. And the second one is the uh, the weights on the assets should be less than or equal to the weights on the uh, the number of employees. So you add that information into the DEM model, and then you into the multiply model. You can only, again, you can only add that into the multiply model, not the invariant models, because in the invariant models you don't have those multiplies. Um, so you add that into the uh, uh, the multiply models only. Um, the question: How you how do you develop um, those type of assurance regions? Um, the previous one, I just you know assume that you have those type of Preference over the number of employees and the asset, or the the relative importance, for example. Um, the, uh, there are also other ways. Um, you can, for example, you can, if you have um, an, an input and output that has a price, uh, but the price changes over time. So you would use that price range. Okay, you would use that price range to develop the the errors. Now here's an example that we actually used. Uh, the processing time for the uh, transactions in bank branches. So here you have seven um, different type of transactions, and each transaction you know um, takes um, different times to, to finish. So, um, for example, uh, for the second transaction, open up a new account. Um, the the range, the, the the time needed to process that that transaction is given in in this table, so so in a sense, you will have to develop some sort of um, a range. Then, based upon that, and then you're gonna do the ratio uh, ratio ones. So these are the developed um, the assurance regions based upon the processing time, the minimum process time, and the maximum processing time in this table. Um, I don't feel that. Um, I should tell you how these uh, low and upper bounds will develop. Um, just I I want you to try 
um, to fig uh, try to figure out how do I develop this um, these uh, row and upper bounds by using the data in the table. Um, it, it's not that difficult. You can, you can figure that out. So this is actually this is how you would develop errors in if you have some sort of range in particular um, on particular inputs and outputs. Now you may ask the question: In this table, I already have those ranges for all the transactions. Why don't I use say um, this is the output? Let's say I use uh, mu one is less than or equal to two two point oh nine three and and it's greater than or equal to uh, point seven nine eight. Why don't I use them um, directly? The reason is because this uh, the reason is because the, um, the transformation that you uh, used. Let me go back to that slide. Okay, this is the um, the chance Cooper transformation. Now let's let's look at the uh, the output because the, these two things are too close to tell the difference. Um, you have a mu and u. The the processing time is actually on the, these u's. Those are weights in the ratio model. Um, the ARs are actually about mu's, those multiplies in the multiply model. And you notice that is a T involved here. So you will have to divide uh, the the mu over different mu's to cancel that T. Okay, to cancel that T to use that. Um some people use the um, the weight, you know, the what do you call the the bound of the data, you know, use um, let me go back to that slides again. Use that those um, information here directly. Um, I don't think that's appropriate. Um, you you can try it to to um, to to solve the model to see uh, what happens. It just doesn't make any doesn't make any sense uh, because these are on the 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 weights on the ratio model, not the these are not information on the multipliers. So you have to convert that into multipliers um, in here. So this is how, you, and then you would uh, because this is the um, the ratio constraints you will have to convert each ratio constraints into two uh, linear constraints and to um, to solve it. And here you can have like one side of the constraints you will have something like that or you will have something greater than or equal to um, the row bound only. So you, I mean you don't have to have the the both the the lower and upper bound in this case. Uh, by introducing those ARs into the multiplier models, the efficiency would uh, would not be improved, and usually it is actually uh, uh, reduced. And even some of the the frontier DMUs, the efficient ones, will become inefficient. Um, that's only because that if you don't have those um, ARs, that means the weights that are associated with those efficient DMUs are not not realistic, and so. The assurance regions, in this sense, they improve or refine the the results. Now, if you add those assurance regions for all the inputs and the outputs, and the the weights will usually be um, um, uh, positive, so you don't have to worry about choosing a proper value for the epsilon.